Back in January, I reviewed the Two Tree Sapphire Pro, which is a very affordable desktop 3D printer at around 300 US dollars. I was super excited because it uses a Core XY motion system, which I discussed a little bit more in that review if you didn't get a chance to check that out. And typically Core XY 3D printers are a lot more expensive or most of the ones that are available are more in a, you know, bill of material, here's the Thingiverse files, and you've got to source most of the parts yourself. So there was quite a bit of hype around this machine because again, it was a Core XY motion system and at a price point that was attainable for a hobbyist. So I was really excited to be able to print out with this uh, 3D printer and see what it was all about. For those that just want a summary of that review, the basic outcome was that I felt like the printer had good bones, but it left a lot to be desired. With that printer, I had a ton of issues with under extrusion and clogs and jams with the hot end. The biggest issue that I had was with the hot end. It was just a complete nightmare and it ended up getting so bad to the point where in the end, I wasn't even able to complete very many prints before the hot end was just not usable. In that video, I talked about me wanting to upgrade it to a E3D V6 hot end and then run all of my tests and give my opinion on how the printer performed with this upgrade. So I am really happy to announce that uh, four months later, I finally got around to doing this upgrade. So in today's video, we are going to talk a bit about what went into upgrading the Two Tree Sapphire Pro to an E3D V6 hot end, what mounting system I went with, and of course, we're gonna do some printing and see just how much of a difference and what the quality of the prints are like with this new setup. So my name is Daniel, thank you for tuning into ModBot, and let's get into the video. Although I've only had this upgrade for a few weeks, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I had started working on this upgrade quite a long time ago. Um, I looked, I did, I really didn't want to 3D model a uh, hot end mount myself because I've got so many projects going on, I just didn't have the time to do all the measurements. So I was looking around to see what was currently available. One of the issues that I saw early on was there was a lot of versions of the Two Tree Sapphire. There's the original Two Tree Sapphire, there's the Sapphire S, there's the Sapphire Pro, which is the one I have, and then there's another Sapphire Pro, which doesn't have a different revision number, but at some point they changed the Sapphire Pro to a slightly different one. What this meant was that a lot of the mounting solutions that had been created by people and uploaded to a website like Thingiverse weren't actually gonna be compatible because the mounting holes and just a little bit of the X and Y gantry system that holds the hot end was just a little bit different. So again, I had to really look around to find one that would be compatible with my printer. Originally, I was looking at one that Stefan from CNC Kitchen had created, but again, he had a different version of the printer than myself, so his version was not compatible. I then found another version that required you to use a different fan than the stock fan for the hot end that came on this printer, and normally that wouldn't be a big issue. I would just go on Amazon and order a fan and have it in a couple of days, but because of all of the craziness going on in the world right now, you can't just do that. It takes, you know, three, four weeks to get things in um, if it's not something that is required for day-to-day -day life. Um, so. I, one of the goals I had also was that it would require nothing that I didn't already have. Browsing around for quite a while and printing out different parts and figuring out, no, this wasn't gonna work, or no, I wasn't too crazy about the design. Finally, in March, uh, someone by the name of Filichev on Thingiverse created a 
universal hot end mount system for the Two Tree Sapphire Pro. It allows you to mount an E3D V6. There's one version for a Creality or Micro Swiss style hot end. And then there was another mount which allowed you to use a mixing extruder, which is one that I had not heard of before. Looking at the files, I thought it looked really great and it does want you to use a 40 millimeter fan, but you do have the option to use the standard uh, 20 millimeter fan that comes with the E3D V6. So that is the one I decided on. And I actually was really excited initially because my goal with this was to use Soraya Tech's blue tough resin to print out the mounting system in resin because it's great for that. Soritex Blue Resin is an incredibly tough resin that is also heat resistant, so it's perfect for that. Again, the issue came down to that all of my IPA is gone, so I have no way to really cure uh, resin printed parts that well, and I didn't want to shove uncured parts onto my 3D printer. And I did run into one store and there was no IPA, as I figured there's definitely a shortage of that currently available. So I did opt to use the 20 millimeter fan that uh, you know is the standard fan for the E3D V6 heatsink. What I ended up doing was just firing up my Artillery Genius printer, which you can see right there, and printing it out in a white PETG, which worked relatively well. I took the parts off the printer. I then went ahead and used just some drill bits and my hand to basically take the printed parts and clean out any of the holes that screws were supposed to go inside of. Um, the holes, the parts printed out relatively well, but still some of the parts that were on the bed, the holes were a little bit too small for what they should have been. And my concern was if I was forcing a screw in that I might actually split the plastic. So um, I definitely recommend cleaning up printed parts before mounting them together. Uh, it's just something that's good and useful to do uh, to prevent yourself again from breaking a 3D printed part. I've done that so many times where I shove printed parts together and I'm a little too forceful and I split something and then you've got to reprint it, which it's not the end of the world, but my goal was definitely to learn um, from my past experiences. And so that's something that I, I've learned and I definitely recommend anyone else that's gonna be bolting parts together is if you can, make sure you clean up the holes before you decide to uh, put some hardware into those parts. So once I printed out the parts, what was the install like? Overall, it was relatively simple. I just undid the belts on the printer. I unscrewed all the parts for the hot end assembly and took everything out. Um, luckily, because the E3D V6 that I ordered was a 12 volt setup while this printer is a 24 volt system. I was actually able to use the heater cartridge that the machine already had wired in, as well as the 20 millimeter fan that the machine already had wired in. So I didn't use those new ones. And the thermistor, um, the one that the printer came with is a cartridge style thermistor. However, the E3D V6 hot end that I had used a more older style or traditional bulb type thermistor. So I did go ahead and unplug the thermistor from the board, cut a little bit above the plug, solder the wires together and Pop, uh, pop that new thermistor into place. But aside from that, just cleaning up a little bit of the cable routing, there wasn't a whole lot that I had to do. And overall wiring was relatively simple and I was able to probably put the whole thing together in I'd say an hour, roughly under an hour, just again, filming and making sure that I was careful and not uh, damaging any of the cables is really what took most of the time in this process. So I did have a couple of files that were still on the micro SD card for the Two Tree Sapphire Pro, and I figured what better test than to not reslice anything and just print one of these files and see how it turns out. And I had a Benchy file that I had pre-sliced months ago back in January that I was never able to get to print very well. It would it would stop printing, it would jam, it would under extrude. So I figured let's do a Benchy, that sounds great. So I loaded up some gray PLA, I hit print, I watched the first couple of layers lay down and saw that it was laying down um, nicely. I went to bed with my fingers crossed and woke up in the morning to an amazing looking Benchy. I was so blown away. It was exactly what I was hoping for and it just, it like confirmed in my head that yes, this machine has a lot of potential. This, this hot end is definitely one of the weakest links on this printer. So once I saw that, I said to myself, okay, it's time to go big. Let's do a print that's not, you know, more than a couple of hours. So I found a really awesome model on Thingiverse of Cat Bus, and I went ahead and sliced that. It was about a 20 hour print. I hit go 
and 20 hours later, I was so stoked on the results. It looked amazing. Um, there was a little bit of stringing, which is due to the fact that I'm using an Ender 3 profile that I put together for this printer. My Ender 3 does have direct drive while this is Bowden, and I totally forgot to change the retraction distance from two, two millimeters to um, what should have been a lot more for this. So that is why there is some stringing. However, aside from that, there was no under extrusion, there was no layer inconsistencies, and it looked phenomenal. I was so, so excited. So then I went ahead and found a model of Totoro, and I swapped out the filament for some blue PLA. I scaled him up and it was about an eight hour print and I hit go. Recently, Aaron and I watched uh, My Neighbor Totoro for the first time, which I know most people are like, what, you just saw it for the first time? But yes, we did and we fell in love with it. So if you can't tell the theme here of Cat Bus from that film as well as Totoro, that is why. It's because we're a little bit obsessed right now. So I went ahead and sliced up that file, printed it out. Again, it turned out amazing. I did increase the retraction ever so slightly, but when it got towards the top of Totoro, he's got little fingers that look like this and they're all um, stretched out. And so there was still a bit of stringing. Clearly I need to uh, work on the profiles a little bit more. But again, the main thing I was focused on is no clogs, no under extrusion, and just consistent laying down a filament, which we have totally succeeded in. Lastly, I had to throw some PETG at the printer just to see how it handled because PETG was something I was not able to do with the stock hot end because of how many problems I had with it. So I threw some red PTG on there. I found a relatively simple model of a uh, Nuka-Cola bottle from Fallout over on my mini factory. I sliced that up. I did increase the retraction even more so as well as the speed knowing that it's PTG and seeing how it had performed with PLA. Clearly I needed to up that a bit and I think it did a really good job. It still again needs a bit more tuning but the bottle turned out great. The layers are incredibly consistent and I think it turned out amazing. Like. From before I installed the hot end, I had a printer that was not usable or barely usable. And now that I installed the E3D V6, this thing can totally hang with uh, really the best of my 3D printers. And I seriously think that this printer could be a workhorse at this point. Which brings me back to my review from January, where I said the same thing, that I think that this printer has a ton of potential and that with a little bit of upgrades, if you know getting, into, getting the printer, if you know that you're gonna get this, you want a Core XY, you want the aluminum frame, you're okay with doing a hot end swap or something like that, this just proves to me that this machine can absolutely perform. I would love to see two trees just implement a new hot end design moving forward because again, the one that I got left a lot to be desired. And I'm not sure if mine was just not machined to spec or what the deal was, but I've used a lot of different hot ends and it was seriously a incredibly problematic hot end for me um, from the get-go. So I am thankful to say that my two trees Sapphire Pro printer is up, it is running, it is running very, very well and I look forward to doing some more printing on this machine. Anyone that has this printer or is thinking about getting this printer, I will place links in the description to this specific Thingiverse model that I use. That way you can pre-print the upgrade if you want to or the mounting system for the E3D V6. I'll also place links to this printer in case you do want to find out more or purchase one for yourself. Again, I stand by what I said before. It's got a really rigid frame. It is a Core XY machine and the, even the extruder on here, which is basically like a Bontech BMG clone. Originally, I was concerned that there was issues with that, but after installing this, I can clearly see that the extruder works fine and it was all the hot end that was just causing uh, tons of problems for me. As always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, which is awesome to be able to say because I've been doing that for so long now. Uh, if you do want to support the channel even more so, I will place links in the description down below to my Patreon. I've got some really awesome rewards and I am working on some additional cool stuff as well. So you'll definitely want to check that out. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. I'm out. Peace, guys.